Good morning, Principal Sir, Master in Charge of Clubs and Societies, Mr. T. D. C. P. Amaratunga, Deputy and Assistant Principals, Senior Games Master, Teacher in Charge of the AESIU, Mr. Mark Vasana Vijay Singha, Ms. Maduresha Chaturani, our guest lecturer, teachers, prefects, and my fellow royalists. Welcome to the Aurora, the grammar workshop organized by the Advanced English Skills Improvement Unit of Royal College. So before we start off today's proceedings, I'd like to request all the uh, Malis who have joined to please rename yourselves with your name and your grade. So with your name first and uh, then your grade. Okay. Uh, so to start off today's proceedings, I'd like to uh, introduce our guest lecturer, uh, Mrs. Madure, Ms. Maduresha Chaturani. Uh, Ms. Maduresha Chaturani is a dedicated professional with the ability to provide excellent services to students and possess, possesses more than 11 years experience as a consultant lecturer at the National Institute of Business Management. She also possesses an ex exceptional ability to maintain good relationships with the students and plays a major role in supervising research and projects. She is an external examiner for the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. She also holds a master's degree in linguistics and a bachelor's degree of arts from the University of Calgary. So without further ado, please welcome our guest lecturer for today, Ms. Maduresha Chatra. Over to you, Miss. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. A very good morning to all of you. How are you? Is everything all right? Can we start the session? Let me check the number of participants. How many participants do we have? Okay, we have a lot. Can I start the session then? Well, if you have been listening attentively to the way I started the session, you may have realized that I asked you a series of questions. That's the human nature. We tend to ask a lot of questions. By the way, I have a small question. Who tends to ask a lot of questions, men or women? As for you, who asks a lot of questions, men or women? Anybody? I know this is not a difficult question at all. Women. That's true. I have to agree with you. I have to totally agree with you. By the way, can, can you all see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, no. All right. Okay. Let's have a look at the list of questions that I asked from you at the very beginning. How are you? Are you ready to start the session? Have you had your breakfast? How many participants are there? Can I start the session then? If you can have a look at this list of questions one more time, you can see that we can divide this list of questions into two categories based on the response that you provide. Let's look at the responses that are required. First one, how are you? I need information for that question. How are you? Probably you can say, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Thank you. What about you? Mm -hmm. Second question, are you ready to start mm -hmm. the session? Well, for that question, you can simply say yes or no. As the answer, yes or no is enough for me. Have a look at mm -hmm. the third question. Sumudu? So sorry to disturb, Miss. Uh, right, uh, have you shared your screen, Miss? Oh, God. Sumudu? Yeah, now it's okay. All right. I'm so sorry. So sorry about the interruption. I hope you can see the list of questions I, I asked from you at the very beginning of the session. Starting from the first, how are you? I require information for the question one. Number two, are you ready to start the session? For that, you can simply say yes or no as the answer. Third one, have you had your breakfast? Even for the third question, you can simply say yes or no. That's enough as the answer. 
Fourth one, how many participants are there? Before starting the session, I had a look at the number of participants we have. How many participants are there for number four? Can you say yes or no? No, for that, I want information. I want details. But have a look at the fifth one, the last question. Can I start the session then? Even for the fifth question, you could simply say yes or no. So if we analyze these questions one more time, we can figure out that we can divide this list of questions into two based on the responses required. For some questions, you can simply say yes or no as the answer. But for other questions, you need to come up with information. You need to come up with details. In that case, we can label these two question types as yes, no questions and WH questions or information questions. The main difference is, the difference between these two question types is for yes, no questions, a simple answer, yes or no, is enough. But for WH questions, for information questions, you can't say yes or no. You need to come up with information. Well, in our day-to-day -day conversations, we tend to ask a lot of questions. If you listen to the other conversations, other, others' discussion, I know that's a bad habit, but if you do listen to the others' conversations, you will realize that we tend to ask a lot of questions. In English, there are a lot of question types. But out of the huge list of question types, the most commonly used question types are yes, no questions, and WH questions. Is that clear? In English, we have a lot of question types. I'm sure you have heard about direct questions, people talk about indirect questions, people talk about tag questions, rhetorical questions. Likewise, we have a huge list of questions. But out of this list, the most commonly used question types are yes, no questions and WH questions. WH questions, they are very easy to identify. Why? Because they all start with the WH question word. Except how, except how all the others start with WH. That's why we call them WH questions. They can also be called information questions. I hope the difference between yes, no questions and WH questions are clear to you. So let's have a look at these WH questions in detail because it's really important to know where to use these WH question words. Sometimes we are confused. Sometimes you don't use the appropriate question word. But by the end of today's discussion, you should have a clear idea, clear understanding about WH question words. Plus, you should be able to use them appropriately. Let's start with the WH question word, who. As you can see here, who is used to ask questions about a person's identity. See the word, a person's identity. Can you see the examples? Who invented the television? Can someone respond? Who invented the television? See, I'm asking questions about a person. Non a person. Non thank you. Non wow, thank you. That's so nice. See, I am asking questions about a person's identity. Second, who's your best friend? I know you have a lot of friends, but who's your best friend? So I'm asking questions about a person's identity. Can someone tell me your best friend's name? My best friend is Shazam. Okay, thank you for the response. Who's your best friend? Who would like to go on a trip? Would love to go on a trip? See, I'm asking questions about a person's identity. By the way, who's this? Can you see a person in this slide? Who's this? Anybody? Yes, Bezos. Yes, Bezos. An American entrepreneur? Yes. See, so to ask 
questions about a person's identity, use the WH question word who. Moving on, whose. Whose is used to ask which person something belongs to. Which person something belongs to. There, there are bags and I want to know which one is yours. Which one is yours? Which bag is this? I'm sorry. Which, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Whose is used to ask questions? To ask which person something belongs to. Now, I want to know which one is yours? Which bag? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I, I got confused. So sorry. This is about whose. Whose is used to ask which person something belongs to? Now, whose bag is this? Miss, it's mine. Miss, it's mine. Whose parents are they? Miss, they're my parents. Whose orders do you follow? I follow my own orders. I follow my parents' orders. Whose is used to ask which person something belongs to? You can see a map here. Whose country is this? Whose country is this? This is? Whose country is this? This is? Oh, so um, this is our country. This is our country. This is our beautiful country. By the way, whose school is this? Whose school is this? This is our school. Uh, our school. Our school. Our school. Oh, this is your school. This is your school. So let me sum it up. Whose is used to ask which person something belongs to? Whose bag is this? Whose parents are they? Whose orders do you follow? So to ask which person something belongs to, use the WH question word whose. Moving on to which. Which is used to ask someone to identify a specific person or a thing out of a number of people or things. Let me explain. Suppose there are a lot of things on the table. I want you to specify one. In that case, I need to use the WH question word, which, which one is yours? Which one is yours? There are a number of things. There are a lot of books on the table. I want you to specify one. So to specify one out of many, you can use the WH question word, which. Which is your letter? There are, there are several letters. I want you to specify one. I want you to pick one. So which one is yours? Now, as you know, we have, several, we have several vaccines available for COVID. Which is the best COVID-19 vaccine? There are several vaccines available. So out of these vaccines, which one is the most effective one? Which one is the best one? So out of a number of things, if you want to specify one, you can use the WH question word, which. At the same time, out of a number of people, if you want to specify one person, you can use the same WH question word, which. For example, you go to the hospital to channel a doctor. And they ask you, which doctor do you want to channel? Because there are a lot of doctors. Out of a number of people, you want to specify one person. In that case, they ask you the question, which doctor do you want to channel? See? So if you want to specify one person out of many, you can use the WH question word, which. There are a lot of authors, but I want to know your favorite, most preferred author. So I can ask the WH question, which author do you prefer most? Because we have a lot of authors. In that case, if I want to specify one person out of many, I can use the WH question word, which. This applies to objects as well as for people. If I sum it up, if you want to specify one person out of many, out of many doctors, you want to specify one. Use the WH question word, which. Which doctor do you want to channel? Which author do you prefer most? At the same time, out of many things, you want to specify one. There are a lot of books. Which one is yours? So out of a number of things, I want to specify one. In that case, 
The WH question word that is required is which. Moving on to when. As you all know, when is used to ask questions about time. You can use this WH question word to ask questions about the past, about the present, and also about the future, about the time. Something happened, something happens or will happen. Examples. When did you find a new apartment? Last week. When did you find a new apartment? This refers to past. So to ask questions about the time, the idea of WH question word is when. When did you find a new apartment? Last week. When can you meet me? Well, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow evening. When can you meet me? When are you ready to face this challenge? I'm not sure. Probably after A levels. When are you ready to face this challenge? So to ask questions about time, use the WH question word when. Where, moving on to where. Where is used to ask questions about a place or direction. If you want to ask questions about a place, use the WH question word where. Where are you going? I want to know the place. That's Taj Mahal. It's in India. I want to know the place. Where do you live? I live in Malabe. I want to know the place. So to ask questions about the place, you can use a WH question word where. At the same time, if you want to know directions, still the WH question word which is required is where. If somebody asks, uh, excuse me, where's the cashier? As a cashier, now I have to give the person directions. Excuse me, where's the post office? I need to give directions. So to ask questions about directions or about a place, you can use the WH question word where. Moving on. Oh, hold on. We didn't discuss that. Huh? Where do you find kangaroos? Australia. In Australia. In Australia. See, I'm Australia. Australia. See, I'm asking questions about a place. Where do you see kangaroos? Okay. Moving on to why. Why is used to ask questions about the reason. Suppose you are late to come home. Don't your parents ask questions? Don't they want to know the reason? Yeah, they will definitely ask, why are you late? Why are you late? They want to know the reason. So if you want to ask about the reason for something, you can use the WH question word, why? Why don't you study? Because I'm tired, that's the reason. Why did they make a complaint? Because they were dissatisfied, because they were not happy with the service. Why don't you apologize? Because I'm not guilty. Because I didn't do anything wrong. You want to know the reason. So if you want to know the reason for something, use the WH question word, why? Okay. Why did the ex-president of Afghanistan leave the country, flee the country? Any idea? Why did the president of Afghanistan That's true. Basically to avoid bloodshed, to avoid violence, he fled the country. You updated, yeah? You know a lot of current news. Wow, that's nice. Keep it up. Next word. How? How is usually used to ask about the method? You want to know the method. You want to know the process. Miss. Miss. Uh, why is how a WH word? It is not starting with that. Yeah, I told you at the very beginning also. Except how. Except how all the other words start with WH. So we generally label them as WH questions. True, except how all the others start with WH. That's why we have generalized this as WH questions. Agree. So at the very beginning, as I told you, except how all the other words start with WH. But we have put them to a common category as WH questions. How is the only exception? Okay. How is usually used to ask about the method? You want to know the method. You want to know the process. As you can see the examples, how is plastic made? 
You want to know the method. How did you manage to escape? How did you escape? Security officers helped me. You want to know the method. How did you do that? How can we apply for this? You can apply for this online. You can download an application. How can we apply? You want to know the method. You want to know the process. If somebody asks, how is cheese made? I want to know the method. I want to know the process. You can simply say, cheese is made from milk. Cheese is made from milk. How is cheese made? See, I want to know the method. So to ask questions about the method, you can use the WH question word, how. The ideal question word is how. Moving on to how many and how much. What's the difference between these two? How many is used with uncountable nouns? How, how many, I'm sorry, how many is used with countable nouns? How much is used with uncountable nouns? How many and how much are used to ask what number of things there are countable or what amount of something there is uncountable? So if the noun is countable, use the word how many. If the noun is uncountable, use the word, use the question word, how much? As you can see in the examples, how many students are there in your class? Students, it's countable. You can count the number of students. In that case, you need to ask, you need to use the question word, how many? Because the students can be counted. You can count the number of students. But consider money, think of money, we consider money as uncountable. Even emotions, uncountable. We ask, how much do you love me? Because emotions, feelings, they are not countable. In that case, the question word should be, how much, how much do you love me? Even money, we consider money as uncountable. How much are you gonna spend for entertainment? Suppose you are organizing the New Year Festival. And uh, you have a question, how much are we going to spend for entertainment this time? How much are we going to? How many? Wrong. So if the noun is uncountable, use the question word, how much? If the noun is countable, use the question word, how many? I hope it's clear to you. How many doggies can you see? So doggies is countable. So I should use the question word, how many? How many doggies can you see? Two. We can see four dogs. Okay. All right, moving on to how long. How long? Where do we use the question word how long? How long is used to ask about the length of a period of time. If you want to ask about the period of time, use the WH question word, use the question word how long. Let me give you an example. Suppose I go for an interview and at the interview, they ask me, well, how long have you been working for this organization? How long have you been working at an IBM? How long have you been working at an IBM? They want to know about the period. So my response has to be about 11 years now, more than 11 years. How long have you been working? They ask questions about the period of time. How long can you wait? How long can you wait? Maximum five minutes, we are already late. How long can you wait? I can give you only five minutes. So to ask questions about the period of time, use the question word, how long? How far? How far is used to ask questions about distance and extent. You want to know the distance. How far is it to Kendi? You want to know the distance, how many kilometers? How far is it to Kendi? How far did you walk? Five kilometers, I'm exhausted. How far did you walk? About six kilometers, I'm exhausted now. How far have you completed? Suppose your teacher gives you a project. And the following week, the teacher wants to know the extent that you have covered, the extent that you have done. So the teacher will ask, how far have you completed? Miss only the first phase, miss, miss only the introduction part, miss, miss only up to the, uh, miss only up to the um, data analysis, miss. How far you have 
questions about the extent. It can be about a project or it can be about a book even. I ask you to read Pride and Prejudice. And the following week, I ask you the question, how far have you read? Miss, up to page number 56, up to page number 100, Miss. How far have you completed? How far have you read? So to ask questions about the distance and extent, use the question word, how far? All right, before uh, discussing answers, let me quickly, let me very quickly wrap it up, okay? Summarize what we discussed, who, is used to ask questions about a person's identity. Who's, I'm sorry. Okay. Who is used to ask questions about a person's identity? Whose is used to ask which person something belongs to? Whose bag is this? Whose parents are they? Whose mother passed away? Amali's mother. Which person something belongs to? Which is used to ask someone to identify or specify somebody or something out of a number of people or out of a number of things. Out of a number of things, you want to specify one. Which one is yours? There are a lot of books. Which one is yours? There are a lot of doctors. Which doctor do you want to channel? So out of a number of people, you want to specify one. Out of a number of things, you want to specify one. When is used to ask questions about time. When is your birthday? When can we meet again? See, you ask questions about time. Where is used to ask questions about a place and also to ask for directions. Where are you going? Where do you see kangaroos? See, you're asking questions about a place, plus to ask for directions. Uh, excuse me, where's the cashier? Excuse me, where's the police? Uh, excuse me, where's the post office? You ask questions about the place as well as directions. In that case, use the WH question word, where. Why is used to ask questions about the reason? You want to know the reason. Why are you crying? Why don't you listen to me? Why can't you understand? I want to know the reason. So to ask questions about the reason, use the WH question word, why? How is used to ask about the method? I want to know about the method, the process. How is cheese made? Cheese is made from milk. How did you escape? How did you do that? I want to know the method. I want to know the process. The question word is how. At the same time, how many and how much? If you want to know the number of things there are or what amount of something there is, use how many and how much. If the noun is countable, use how many. If the noun is uncountable, use how much. How long is used to ask questions about the period of time. How long have you been waiting for us? For two hours. How long have you been working for this organization? Almost five years. How long? You want to know about the period of time. How far is used to ask questions about the distance? How far is it to your school? How far? At the same time, to ask questions about the extent, maybe about a project, maybe a book that you're reading. How far have you completed? Miss, we've just started, Miss. We've just started. I want to know the extent. So to ask questions about the extent, how far is ideal? I think we can discuss the answers for this. There can be multiple answers. See, there can be multiple answers for some questions. Can you suggest me a WH question word for the first one? Made you cry like this. Who? Who? Who made you cry? Who made you cry like this? That's correct. At the same time, you can also use the WH question word, what? What made you cry? Who made you cry? Both of them are right. Okay, both of them are okay. Number two, is Oliver leaving? Why? 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 Why is he leaving? Why is Oliver leaving? Why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? Why is Oliver leaving? Number three, 
Are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Okay. What's up? Why why are you laughing? What's wrong? Why are you laughing? Fourth one. Does feminism what? mean? What? What does feminism mean? Correct. What What does this mean? What does feminism mean? What does feminism mean? Does the boss want? What What does the boss want? 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 What does he want? What does he want from us? What What does he want from us? I don't get it. Was your reservation made? The receptionist asks. What? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Was your reservation made? When? When was I get? When was your reservation made, sir? Sir, when was it made? Sir, when was your reservation made? I made it yesterday. I reserved. The, I made your phone call yesterday and reserved the table yesterday. When was your reservation made? Sir, what happened? This is easy. What happened? 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 Is my money number eight? Is my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? Number nine. Do you think you are? Where do you think you are? Where do you think you are? Where do you think you are? Okay. Where do you think you are? Can you also ask? What do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? How do you like that? Noya. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? To talk to me like that? Who do you think you are? Number ten. Is the use of asking her? What is the use of asking? What is the use of asking? What is the use of asking her? What's the point of asking her? I'm sure she doesn't know. I'm sure she is ignorant. What's the use of asking her? Should I know? How should I? How should I know? How should I know? Where's my key? How should I know? Where's my purse? How should I know? How should I know? Number twelve. Has he written this? How? How has he written this? How? When has he written this? When has he written this? Why has he written this? Why has he written this? When has he written this? Why has he written this? Metros is the best. There are a lot of metros. Which metros is the best? Which metros is the best? Metros. Right. You are interested in purchasing a metros, and you ask, which metros is the best? Fourteen. Was your meeting? When was your meeting? Was your meeting? Was your meeting? What metros is the best? Ah, well, for number thirteen, don't use the W H question word what because. Out of a number of things, if you want to specify one, the ideal question word is which. There are a lot of metrics available, and you want to know which one is the best. So use the W H question word which. Okay. Was your meeting? You can ask. How was your meeting? How was it? How was it? Oh, when was your meeting? When was your meeting? Last one. Do you really think? What do you mean? What do you mean? Really 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you think? What do you think? What do you really think? I want your opinion. What do you really think? All right. Now this is with challenge. We can do this together. This is a phone call. It's a phone conversation. Hello. Good morning. A B C Learning Limited. How may I help you? To give the answer, yes. This is the program office. Yes, this is a program office. What kind of a question can we ask? Hello, is this the program office? Is Hello, this the program office. Correct. Hello, is this a program office? Yes, this is a program office. Now, to give the answer, yes, you can get details about courses. What kind of a question can you ask? Can I get the details about? I get the details. Can I get the details? Very good. See, even before discussing about your snow questions, you are asking your snow questions. Brilliant, excellent. Can I get details about courses? Yes, you can get details about courses. Well, the next business management diploma starts in April. What's the date? This. When is the next business management diploma? When is the next business management diploma start? See, look at the word start. So this refers to the present. When does when does the next business management diploma start? 
when does it start when does the next diploma start when does the next business management diploma start you want to know the time in april that's the answer look at the next well the exact date of commencement is 26th april uh, when may may i know the exact month. date of the commencement that's nice may i know the exact date of commencement can you please tell me the exact date of commencement could you please tell me the exact date of commencement the course fee is 95000 how much is the how much is how much, much is the course fee what's the course fee how much is the course fee may i know about the course fee can you please tell me about the course fee what about the course fee see we ask questions because people are inquisitive people tend to be very inquisitive people have a lot of questions to ask that's our nature that's how human beings are yes you can pay the course fee in two installments i pay the course fee uh, and i pay the course fee and i pay the course fee in installments correct can i pay the course fee in installments can i pay the course fee in installments yes you can pay the course fee in installments in three installments well, you can collect an application from any ABC branch or by logging on to our website. What should be the question? How do I get? How, how, do, I get, how, do, I how do I collect, how do I collect an application? application? How can I collect how do I an application? Collect the application? That's correct. How can I collect an application? By the way, how can I collect an application? You want to know the method. You can collect an application from any branch or by logging on to our website. Next one. No, no, there's no aptitude test. What should be the question? Uh, no, no, there's there no aptitude test. Aptitude test. That's is it. There a interview? Is there an aptitude test? Is there a placement test? Is there a placement test? Is there an aptitude test? No, no, there's no aptitude test. There's no placement test. But there will be an interview. Last question. The selection interview will be conducted by one of our consultants. What should be the question? Who will conduct the selection interview? Who will conduct the interview? One more question. One more question. Uh, who will conduct the interview? Who will conduct the selection interview? Well, one of our consultants will conduct the interview. You see? People tend to ask a lot of questions. People want to know more. People want more information. So we tend to ask a lot of questions. Thank you very much for your information. I'll send my application. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Good. You're doing good. Now, let's discuss a little bit about yes, no questions. Up to now, we discussed about WH questions. Now, you are comfortable with WH questions. You can ask WH questions. Moving on to yes, no questions. As we have already discussed, these are the questions to which you can say yes or no. How do you form a yes, no question? It's very simple. It's so easy. What do you do? If you can see a helping verb, bring it forward. Take it front. Bring it forward. This is how you, fo this is how you form a yes no question she's coming tomorrow to ask a yes no question you see the helping verb this is a main verb coming is a main verb is is a helping verb bring it forward is she coming tomorrow yes they can finish the task today can you see the modal verb bring it forward this is a main verb finish is a main verb this is a modal verb bring it forward can they finish the task soon yes they have submitted the report. Submitted is a main verb. This is a helping verb. Bring it forward. Have they submitted the report? So if you can see a helping verb, a modal verb, bring it forward. That's all. No more change. Nothing else changes. Just bring the helping verb or the modal verb forward. You get a yes no question. Is she coming tomorrow? Can they finish the task soon? Have they submitted the report? See, it's so easy. But in some cases, you might not see the helping work. They live in Gaul. She lives in Gaul. She lived in Gaul. 
you can't say they have been warm. Now, which one are you going to bring forward? Live? No. The operator is hidden inside. The operator is hidden inside. It's hidden. You need to find it out. Live. This is plural. In that case, the operator is do. Bring it forward. Do they live in Gaul? Yes. Do you live in Gaul? No. What about this? She lives in Gaul. Can you see S here? It means the operator is does. Bring it forward. Does she live in Gaul? Yes. Does she live in Gaul? See, if this is singular, if the verb is in the singular form, the operator is does. If it is plural, the operator is do. But if it is past tense, lived, in that case, the operator is did. So in certain cases, you might not see the helping verb. You have to find it out. Look at the verb. Okay, this does not have S. This is not in the past tense. Then the operator is do. Okay, this verb has S. This is singular. Operator is does. This is past tense, lived. Operator is did. So likewise, you need to find out the operator. Let's try this. Let's do this activity. I'll help you. For the statements below, write a WH question and a yes no question. First one, they go to the cinema on Sundays. Can you ask me a yes no question first? They go to the cinema on Sundays. Very good. Very good. Very good. Wonderful. Super. See, this is plural. In that case, the operator is do. Bring it forward. Do they go to the cinema on Sundays? Yes. Now, ask the WH question. Why they go to the cinema on Sundays? Why they go to the cinema? When they go to the cinema? When they go to the cinema? Yeah. When is ideal? Because the date is mentioned. You are asking questions about the date. WH question, which is ideal, is when. When do they go to the cinema? On Sundays. On Sundays. Second, Anne works at a supermarket. Can you ask me a yes no question first? Does Anne work at a supermarket? At a supermarket. Yeah. See, the verb has S. It means this is singular. It means the operator is does. Does and work. No S. Does and work at a supermarket? Does she work at a supermarket? Yes. Ask a WH question now. Where does Anne work? Where does Anne work? Where does Anne work? Where, does Anne work? Where, Where is the appropriate question word? Where does Anne work? Where does she work? At a supermarket. Third, she likes to watch cartoons. Ask a yes no question. Does, Does she, she like to watch cartoons? Correct. Does she like to watch cartoons? Yeah, you can see S. Yes, it means operator is dust. Does she like to watch cartoons? Yes. Ask a WH question now. What does she like to watch? What does she like to watch? What does she like to watch? What do you like to watch? What do you like to watch? What does she like to watch? Cartoons. Fourth, it takes two hours to place the order. Can you ask a yes no question first? Look at the verb. Does it take, does it does it take two hours, hours to place the order? order? Okay. Why does it take two hours to place the order? Correct. What? Does it take two hours to place the order? Does it take two hours to place the order? Yes, I'm so sorry. Ask a WH question now. You how long ask. does it take? How, how, long, 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 how long does it take to place an order? How long does it take? How long does it take? This is not expected from you. How long? How long is the appropriate question word? How long does it take? How long? Because you are asking questions about the period of time. How long is the appropriate question word? How long does it take to place the order? Two hours. Last one, they submitted the report last month. 
did they submit the report last they month? They submit the report they last month. W which question? When did they submit when the report? When did they submit the report? They submitted the report last month. Okay, all right. See, so this is past tense. And as we discussed, if it is past tense, the operator is did. Did they submit the report last month? Yes. W which question? When did they submit the report? When did they submit the report? Last month. Okay, now you can form WH questions as well as yes, no questions. Well, let's do a small activity. Suppose um, you're going to interview a famous person in the country. What kind of questions are you going to ask from that person, a celebrity? What kind of questions would you like to ask? You get a chance to interview one of your favorite persons in the country. What kind of questions can how you ask? How was your childhood? How, okay, all right, all right. How was your childhood? Can you tell me- What are the challenges you faced? Wow, yeah. What are the challenges that you had to face in your life? What were the barriers? What were the challenges that you had to face in your life? How did you come this uh, oh, big person? Okay, how did you come this far? How did you achieve? How did okay? How did you achieve these things? What is the secret of your? That was your first debut. I'm sorry. Can you please come again? I didn't get it. Okay. What else? What are the other questions that you would like to ask? Did you fail? Have you ever what failed was... in your life? Have you ever failed in your what, life? What was your uh, best marks in childhood? Uh, best mark? What was what your best marks in childhood? What, what was, was your achievement? first achievement? Okay. Okay. What are your major achievements? What are your major achievements in your life? What was your ambition? What how, is your ambition? How did you become future? famous? What are your future plans? What is it? When did you become famous? Okay, when did you start your career? How did you start your career? When did you start your career? How did you come to this field? Okay, see, we tend to ask a lot of questions. That's our nature. It's all right. It's a human nature. We are very inquisitive. Right. Up to now, we have discussed WH questions and yes, no questions. I hope it's clear. Remember, I told you, English has other question types also. English has a lot of question types. Let's have a look at some other types as well. Direct questions and indirect questions. This is very important. When do we ask indirect questions? When do we ask a question indirectly? When we want to get something from a person we don't know, something like that. That's true. If you are talking to somebody for the first time, if you want to be more polite, if it's a, if the setting is very formal, I think you need to ask your question indirectly. But with your friends, it's okay to be direct. With your friends, you can ask, from your friends, you can ask direct questions. What is this? Where are you going? It's all right. They're your friends. But if you're talking to somebody for the first time, if the setting is very formal, great if you can ask the question indirectly. Let me give you an example. Let me explain your situation, then you will understand this better. Suppose my phone doesn't work today and my husband wants to contact me for something urgent, something really urgent. Since my phone doesn't work, he calls my organization. The receptionist answers the phone. What? will happen or uh, what if my husband asks direct questions like, where is Mother Asia? Where has she gone? When will she come back? You think, do you think it's appropriate? Is it appropriate to ask such direct questions from the receptionist? Where is Mother Asia? Where has she gone? When will she come back? Is it appropriate? Is it nice? No, it's not. Because it's the first time they talk to each other and the context is very formal. Plus, 
Look at the mood it creates. Where is she? Where has she gone? It sounds as if, uh, it sounds as if uh, he's threatening, he's demanding. So based on the situation, based on the person you're talking to, you need to decide whether to ask the question directly or indirectly. My husband could have asked it indirectly. It would have been better if he had asked, excuse me, uh, do you know where Maduresha is? Do you know where Maduresha is? Do you have any idea where she has gone? Where has she gone? That's a direct question. That's inappropriate. Uh, do you know where she has gone? It's an indirect question. When will she come back? That's a direct question. It sounds too authoritative, demanding, rude, mean. Where, when will she come back? Instead, he could have asked uh, one more thing. Do you know when she will come back? When will she come back? Direct question. Do you know when she will come back? You say, so based on the situation, based on the person you're talking to, you need to decide whether to ask the question directly or indirectly. From your friend, it's okay to ask, where's my money? Who is that? Who is that man? It's okay to ask such questions from your friends. They're your friends. From your family members, it's okay. From your cousins, it's okay. But to ask such a question from a stranger, it's not appropriate at all. Let's have a look at these examples. What time is it? Suppose you're traveling on a bus and you don't have a watch. You want to know the time. Is it all right to ask, what time is it? You sound rude. What time is it? You're talking to a total stranger. Ask the question indirectly. So you sound polite. Excuse me, uh, do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? To make your question indirect, you need to add an indirect question phrase. Like, do you know? Can you please tell me? Could you please tell me? Do you have any idea? To make your direct question into indirect, you need to add an indirect question phrase. There's another change. You see here, what time is it? The verb is in front of the subject. When it comes to indirect, there's no inversion. See, do you know is a question. What time is it is a question. Can we have two questions together? No, you can't. You can't. Where is the post office is a question. Do you know is a question. Can we have two questions together? Do you know where is the post office? No. So to ask your question indirectly, you need to use an indirect question phrase. Excuse me, uh, do you know? Can you please tell me? Could you please tell me? May I know? You need an indirect question phrase. Plus, if it is a WH question, Write the WH question word. Use the WH question word as it is. What time is it, Neme? It is. Because you can't have two questions together. So an inversion is not needed in indirect questions. Look at the second example. Who are those people? It's okay to ask this question from your friend. Who are they? But if you ask this question from your teacher or from a stranger, from a colleague, from your boss, ask it indirectly. Uh, do you know? Do you know? This is the indirect question phrase. We use the WH question word who those people are. See the direct question? Who are those people? But when it comes to indirect question, who those people are. An inversion is not needed in the indirect question. Who are they? Direct question. Do you know who they are? Look at this. Where can I find Linda? Where can I meet her? Where can I find Linda? This is a direct question. But you feel like asking this question indirectly because you are asking this question from your boss. Can you tell me? Could you please tell me? 
Use the WH question word where. See, can I find Linda? Where can I find Linda? It's a question, but you can't have another question here. Where I can find Linda? Can you tell me where I can find Linda? I'm sorry, I have no idea. Last one. How much will it cost? Direct question. How much will it cost? How much is this? Direct question. But you feel like being more polite because it's the first time you're talking to the person. So ask it indirectly. Uh, excuse me, do you have any idea how much it will cost? You see, in the direct question, will it cost? But when it comes to indirect question, it will cost. So something important that you remember is, if you need to ask a question indirectly, you need to add an indirect question phrase. Do you know? Can you tell me? Could you please tell me? May I know? Plus, there's no inversion. What time it is? Who those people are? Where I can find Linda? How much it will cost? We're going to practice this. Okay, don't worry. Earlier, we discussed, I'm sorry, WH questions. All of them had WH question words. What if it's a yes, no question? Is he Sri Lankan? Was he prepared? Will he be late? Yes, no question. Now what? Do you know is the phrase that you add. Since there's no WH question word, you need to add if or whether. Is it Sri Lankan? It's a direct question. Is it Sri Lankan? Is she Sri Lankan? But you want to ask the question indirectly. Can you tell me, do you know, may I know if he is Sri Lankan? May I know whether he is Sri Lankan? This is the indirect question. Was he prepared? Parents ask. After the presentation, parents ask, was my kid prepared, miss? Miss, was my kid prepared? Did he do a good job? Was he prepared? Could you please tell me, could you please tell me if he was prepared? Can you please tell me whether he was prepared? So remember, if it's a yes, no question, if it does not, does not do you have a question? Can I continue? Yeah. If it's a yes, no question, if it does not have a WH question word, use if or whether. All right. Will he be late? Again, no WH question word. In that case, you will have to use if or whether. Can you tell me whether he will be late today? Can you please tell me whether he will be late today? So if I quickly summarize, if it's a WH question, write the WH question word. Use the WH question word. Where's the post office? Direct question. May I know where the post office is? Who is he? Direct question. Can you please tell me who he is? May I know who he is? So we use an indirect question phrase. Plus, if it's a WH question, use the WH question word. But if it is a yes, no question, you need to add if or whether. We're going to practice. Where's the post office? This is a direct question. You want to ask this from a stranger. Can you please ask this question indirectly? You can use the phrases given in the blue box. How are you going to ask this question? Indirectly. Because you ask it from a stranger. Could you tell me? Could you tell me? You can make an attempt. That's okay. Let's give it a try. It's all right to make mistakes. Could you tell me where the post office is? Very good. Could you tell me where the post office is? Could you please tell me where the post office is? Where is the post office? Direct question. But you, you can ask it from a stranger. Ask it indirectly. Could you please tell me where the post office is? Second, who is that woman? It's a direct question. You need to ask it from a stranger. Do you know who is, Do you know who is that woman? Do you know who that woman is? Do you know who that woman is? 
Correct. Do you know is a question. Who is that woman is another question. We can't add two questions together. Do you know who that woman is? Do you know who she is? Do you know who she Do is? You know, is Do you know? Sorry? Do you know is there a bank nearby? No. Is there a bank nearby is a yes no question. Since it's a yes no question, you need to use whether or if. Do you know whether there is a bank nearby? Okay? Third one. So for number two, do you know who that woman is? Third one. Where has Nimal gone? Where has he gone? It's a direct question. You sound very rude. Ask it indirectly. Do you have any? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea where animal has gone? Do you have any idea where animal has gone? Where animal has gone? Animal singular. Uh, do you know where he has gone? Do you have any idea where he has gone? Do you know where animal has gone? Fourth one. What can you do about this? What can you do about this? It's a direct question. You need to ask it in a different manner. You want to ask it indirectly because you want to be more polite. Uh, may I know? May I know? May I know what you can do about May I know what you can do about this? What can you do about this? Okay. May I know is a question. What can you do is a question. Mm -hmm. You can't have two questions together. So as you suggested me, may I know what you can do about this? Okay. May I know what you can do about this? And the last one, is there a bank nearby? See, it's a yes, no question. No WH question words. Now what? Can I know? Can I know? If you can, can, can I know there's a bank nearby? Yeah, you know, as we bank. discussed, yeah, if bye. it's a yes no question, you need to use whether or if because there's no WH question word here. You need to use whether or if. Can I know whether there is a bank nearby? Can I know if there is a bank nearby? Whether or if is needed if it's a yes no question. But if it's a WH question, you can use the WH question word as it is. So in summation, if you want to be more polite, if you are talking to somebody for the first time, if you're talking to a stranger, I would advise you to be more polite. I would advise you to ask a question indirectly. But with the people whom you, with, with, the, pe with the known people, like your friends, your cousins, your family members, it's okay to ask questions directly. What is this? Where are you going? Where has she gone? It's okay. But if you're going to ask such a question from a stranger, they are going to be hurt. They are going to be offended and they will judge about your qualities. Okay. So you should have common sense to decide whether to ask a question directly or indirectly. Well done. Let me explain you another interesting question type. Rhetorical questions. I'm sure you ask a lot of rhetorical questions. Your parents ask a lot of rhetorical questions. Your teachers ask a lot of rhetorical questions. What are rhetorical questions? Well, rhetorical questions are questions to which you don't expect an answer. You don't want an answer for, for these questions. You use a rhetorical question to make a point. Let me give you some examples and you will understand. Suppose uh, you work for an organization. Today, you get late to come. You meet your boss at the gate. Your boss looks at his watch and your boss asks, hmm, do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? Are you going to respond? Are you going to say, so it's 10.30 now? No. Because your boss doesn't want to know the time. Your boss is making a point. You are late. See, sometimes we use questions to make a point. We don't want an answer. We are making a point. So when your teacher says, 
Do you know what time it is? Do you know the time? Don't say, uh, yes, ma'am, it's 11.30. No, that's not what your teacher wants to know. Your teacher is making a point. You are late. You are irresponsible. Okay. Another example. Suppose um, you bought a very expensive watch. Your friend likes it. Your friend wants to try it. While trying to wear it, your friend drops it. Now you ask from your friend, do you know how much that costs? Do you know how much that costs? Do you know how much that costs? Do you want to know the cost? Do you actually want to know the cost? No. Your friend is not going to say, oh, I think you told me it's about 45,000, right? No. This is not what you want. You are making a point. This is expensive. Handle with care. This is expensive. See, you use a question to make a point. What is the point that you want to make? This is expensive. Sometimes we ask questions not expecting an answer. Sometimes your teachers ask you, right? How can you be so stupid? You, do, you make a silly mistake. You make a silly mistake and your teacher asks, how can you be so stupid? Are you going to say, because my parents are so stupid? Because my brother is also stupid? No, you don't give, a, you don't give an answer. Because your teacher doesn't expect an answer for that. Your teacher is making a point. You are careless. You are irresponsible. What you have done is wrong. Your teacher is making a point. Your teacher doesn't want an answer. Sometimes your teacher might ask you, have you no shame at all? Have you no shame at all? Are you going to respond to that? Does your teacher want an answer for that? No, your teacher is making a point. What you have done is wrong. This is unethical. This is unprofessional. This is bad. So sometimes you can use questions to make a point. You don't want an answer. You ask this question to make a point. I hope it's clear to you. So they are called rhetorical questions. We use rhetorical questions in our day-to-day -day conversations. We don't expect an answer. We are making a point. They're called rhetorical questions. And the last question type is tag questions. I'm sure you have heard about tags, tag questions. What is a tag? It's a small structure that you add to a statement. Listen carefully. To a statement, you add a tag to the end of a statement. Sometimes students add tags to questions. That's wrong. We add tags to a statement. Then only it becomes a question. We have a question. Do we have a question? No. Okay, moving on. So you can add the tag to a statement. Then it becomes a question. Why do we use tags? For example, you might say, She's pretty, isn't she? She's pretty, isn't she? Isn't she is a tag. Why do you use tags? We use tags for different reasons. One, if you want to make someone agree with you, for you, she's pretty. For you, she's pretty. You want to check whether your friend has the same idea. You want to see whether your friend agrees with you. Use a tag. She's pretty, isn't she? Isn't she? That's a tag. You go to a restaurant, you look at the prices. For you, it's expensive. You tell your friend, it's expensive, isn't it? It's expensive, isn't it? For you, it's expensive. That's your opinion. Okay, that's your opinion. But you want to check with your friend also. So you use a tag. It's expensive, isn't it? Your friend might say, yeah, it is. Let's go to another. So if you want to make someone else agree with you, you can use a tag. 
plus if you want to get something confirm you want to get something confirm use the tab i don't remember whether let's say i'll pick one of you from the list i don't remember i'm not sure whether sumudu attended lectures sumudu attended classes last week i'm not sure i want to get it confirmed so i can ask you didn't come last week did you you didn't come last week did you you didn't come last week did you see i use the tag because i wanted to get it confirmed i remember once you said you have a good camera okay i i remember once you were referring to a good camera you are planning to go on a trip this weekend i want to get it confirmed i can ask you you got a camera haven't you you got a camera haven't you see i want to get it confirmed you can dance can't you you can dance can't you see i want to get it confirmed you can dance can't you so for these reasons you can use a tag remember it's a small structure that you add to the end of a statement she's pretty it's a statement you didn't come last week it's a statement we add a tag to a statement then only it becomes a question she's pretty isn't she you didn't come last week did you now it's a question it's a real question now when forming a tag you need either a be verb do verb or a modal verb do verb like do does did for example you didn't come last week did you to form the tag i used a do verb she's pretty isn't she that's a be verb or else you can dance can't you you can speak french can't you can is a modal verb so to form a tag you need a be verb do verb or a modal verb remember and also after the be verb after the do verb after the modal verb you need a personal pronoun she's pretty isn't she she is a personal pronoun it's expansive isn't it it is a pronoun they are so smart aren't they they is a pronoun so after the be verb do verb modal verb you need to have a pronoun third rule if the main clause is positive affirmative your tag is negative she's pretty it's positive tag negative isn't she you can dance positive tag negative you can dance but you can dance can't you you got a camera haven't you you got a camera positive so the tag has to be negative haven't you okay so if the main clause is positive the tag has to be negative vice versa the other way around if the clause is positive if the clause is negative sorry if the clause is negative the tag has to be positive remember you didn't come last week did you you didn't come last week it's negative then the tag has to be positive did you you weren't listening agnity nani you weren't listening were you you weren't listening that's negative you weren't listening tag positive were you okay so if your main clause is positive tag is negative if the main clause is negative the tag is positive final rule negative tags are contracted cannot you wrong can't you is not she wrong isn't she have not you haven't you negative tags should be contracted okay so these are the five tips that you need to remember to form a tag you need a be verb do verb or a modal verb after the be verb do verb modal verb you write a pronoun if the main clause is positive the tag is negative if the main clause is negative the tag is positive finally the negative tags are contracted they are shortened cannot you no no can't you is not she isn't she let's okay but there are few special cases if you see am in your sentence what is the tag 
I am a good cook. What's the tag that you should use? Aunt I won't help. Correct. That's okay. correct. Aunt I no. Aunt Aunt I is a tag. If M is there in your main clause. So if your main clause has M, your tag should be Aunt I. I am improving, Aunt I. Last time I scored 50, this time I scored 60. I'm improving, aren't I? Second, if you have let's in your main clause, what's the tag? Let's complain. Let's go on a trip. What's Shall the tag? We? Shall we? Shall we is the tag. Let's complain. Shall we? Let's go on a trip. Shall we? If you see let's in your main clause, the tag should be shall we. Finally, if you command, if you order somebody to do something, you can make it sound less forceful. If you use a tag, you can make the order sound less forceful. Come here. What's the tag that you're going to use? Will, will you? Will you? Very good. Come here, will you? Come here is a command. But with a tag, you can make the order sound less forceful. Come here, will you? Listen to me, will you? Talk to me, will you? If it's a negative command, don't do that. Don't talk to me. Don't go there. Don't, uh, don't uh, talk to her. It's a negative command. Again, the same tag, will you? Will you is a tag that you should use with commands, whether it's positive or negative. This is the last activity. Finish there. Let's arrange a party. What's the tag? See, you have let's shall see. We? Shall, shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? See, another important thing is your pitch, your voice has to go up with a tag. Let's arrange a party. Shall we? Shall we? Then only it sounds like a real question. But if you say, let's arrange a party, shall we? Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like a question. Remember, the pitch has to go up with a tag. Let's arrange a party, shall we? Give me your book. What's that? Will, will you? Will you? Will you? Give me your book, will you? Give me your book, will you? Don't harass animals again. Now, this is a negative command. Don't. Don't harass animals again. Will you? Will you? Will you? It's a will, you? It's a, will you? Whether it's a positive command or a negative command, use will you as your tag. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? It's fantastic. It's fantastic, isn't it? Is it? Uh, let's apologize. You have let's. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we apologize? Let's say sorry. Let's apologize. Shall we? Shall we? That's a tag. She migrated to Australia. This is past tense. Didn't she? she? Didn't she? she? Didn't she? Didn't she? she? Wasn't she? Wasn't she? Wasn't she? Positive. What is operator? Do, does, did. or did? This is past tense. Did. 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 And this is positive. That has to be. She. She. She migrated, didn't she? Didn't she? This is past tense. So the operator is did. And this is positive. Tag has to be negative. Didn't she? He appreciates social etiquette. Now, this is simple present tense. Singular. What is operator? Doesn't he? Doesn't. Doesn't he? He, he appreciates social etiquette, doesn't he? They have replied to the letter. You can see the helping verb. And haven't not, they? Haven't they? Haven't they? I think they have replied to the letter. Haven't they? Haven't they? Is a tag. She didn't appreciate the great work. This is negative. So the tag should be positive. This is negative. Did she? Did she? I was, just, I was listening to her speech. She didn't appreciate a great, uh, she didn't appreciate the great service. Did she? Did she? I want to get it confirmed. I was listening to her speech. She didn't appreciate our effort. Did she? Did she? This is, I'm sorry. This is negative. So it has to be positive. Your tag has to be positive. Finally, you weren't listening. This is negative. Won't you? 
Weren't you? Weren't you? Are you sure? Were you? Were you? Because this is negative. Were you? Negative. Your tag has to be positive. You weren't listening. Were you? Were you? You weren't listening. Were you? All right. So today we discussed about question types. English has a lot of question types. We discussed several question types today, namely WH questions. They also call the information questions. Yes, no questions. Then we discussed about direct questions, indirect questions, rhetorical questions, plus tag questions. Time for questions. Uh, in w question, WH questions, uh, mm -hmm. in the how long can we answer the answer it uh, in since? Yeah, you can. Well, the difference is if you want to mention the exact point of time, you can use since. Now, at an interview, they asked me, how long have you been working at an IBM? Well, I can say since 2010 since 2010 but to be very exact to be very exact about the duration i can say for about 11 years even if you use since to talk about the exact point of time it's all right but to answer to the question i think four is appropriate because the question is about the duration how long have you been working there how long have you been waiting for me okay even with the word since you can give an appropriate answer since 2010 i have been working at an ibm that's fine for is used to talk about the duration for two years for two hours for five minutes for three months are you been waiting for a response for three months we have been waiting for resource for five months so to be exact about the duration you can use for but if you want to highlight the starting point since 2010 since january since eight o'clock since morning in that case you can use since clear yes teacher okay and any other questions that you have thank you you've been a wonderful bunch you responded and you got the hold of everything very quickly. It was very easy. It was very interesting teaching you all. Any other questions? Okay, over to you, Sumudu. Thank you, Ms. Madhuresha, for that uh, informative and enjoyable session. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the first day of uh, the second day will be on next Saturday at 8.30. Uh, Ms. Madhuresha will be joining us with another amazing presentation. So hope to see everyone there. Thank you for joining with us today. Hope to meet you all next day as well.